Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Miss Martins. Don't forget to subscribe. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you very briefly what you can expect in term one when it comes to maths. Now this video is going to be for grade eights all the way to grade 12s and I'm basically also going to show you where I get this information from so that you can access it to at any point during the term. Let's jump right into the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe now. I do maths, I do science, I do study tips, study methods, teacher secrets. Starting off with grade 8. Now, first things first, I want you guys to understand that grade 7, 8 and 9 are part of one phase of learning in school. Okay, It's the senior phase of learning and that means that if you look at those topics over here that I have listed, you might be like, but I did that in grade seven. We've done that. Did that last year. But remember, maths builds on one another. So you may have done whole numbers and multiples and factors, HCF, LCM, ratios, percentages. You probably did all of that in grade seven. But in grade eight, we build on that and we take it up a difficulty level. So those are the topics that you can expect for grade eight maths. Now, those are just the basic topics listed. What I've also done for you guys is I've shown you the ATP document. Now, this comes off of the Department of Basic Education's website. I will link it in the description box below so you can download the full document for yourself if you want to. You can check out where I got it from. So just credit to that site. That's where I got it from. And these are called annual teaching plans. So they are made by the Department of Education. They are sent out to your teachers and your teachers take this and they follow this plan. They say, okay, the department says in week one, you can see up here it says weeks, week one, week two, week three. In week one, week two, and week three, we need to be focusing on all of these topics. Now, it's very small. I don't know if you guys can see it very clearly on the screen, but for example, it starts off in week one with whole numbers, properties of whole numbers, and then it goes on to calculations using whole numbers, and then it goes on to different things like estimation, adding and subtraction, and then eventually HCF, LCM. You learn a new method, how to find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple in grade eight. So basically, this is a more detailed plan. If you want access to this document, you can check the link down below in the description box. But that is grade eight. So again, very similar to grade seven, but that's a good thing. So you are building upon things that you already know. So don't throw away your grade seven math books. Then, Grade nines. Hello, grade nines. Welcome to my channel. In grade nine maths, again, you can see the similarities when comparing it to grade eight maths. You do whole numbers. Again, you start off the term very similar way. Then you go into HCF and LCM, which you did in grade eight. Ratio and rate. There are a few things that are new here that you don't do in grade eight, such as direct and inverse proportion. I do have a video on this on my channel if you want to go check it out. We also have more in-depth finance in grade nine. You might work with higher purchase, which you may or may not do in grade eight. You work with compound interest. And then the algebra, the exponents, gets a little bit more complicated. You also work with negative exponents. And then you've got numeric and geometric patterns. So here is a closer look at term one, okay, grade nine, term one. You can see it breaks it down per week for you. So if I move myself out the way, what's cool about this document is it explains more or less how long your teacher will be spending on these topics, which is good because then you know, like to plan ahead, you can read ahead in your textbook. So after week two, you know, in week three, you are doing integers. So that weekend you can go home and read up on integers. That makes a massive difference in your understanding. And what's also cool about this document is at the bottom, it tells you, it says here prerequisite skill or pre-knowledge. So basically this tells you what you need to know already from grade eight or grade nine. So for example, if you're in grade nine, the prerequisite skills, that will be stuff that you need to know from grade seven and grade eight. So if you're working with a tutor, if you're watching YouTube videos, if you have your old textbooks or notebooks, you can go over those sections again. Right. So that is grade nine. Then we jump to grade 10. Now, grade 10, 11, and 12 are part of the FET phase. That is the last phase in high school. And obviously there is a little bit of jump, of a, of a jump from grade nine maths to grade 10 maths. Um, that's because you are starting to learn more complex topics. We introduce a few more things in here that you did not do in grade nine, such as trigonometry. And you can see here that trigonometry, that's one of the topics that you will be doing in term one. You learn about inequalities, 
and equations together, inequalities is also new. You didn't necessarily learn about that in grade nine. And now I see you might be thinking, but ma'am, we're doing expressions again, algebra, we're doing exponents again, we're doing equations again. Yes, you are, but it's not the same. You use concepts that you learned in grade eight and nine, but you build on those concepts. You learn new things, you learn more challenging things. So it's important, it's very, very important to go back to your grade nine books before you go over the grade 10 stuff. And just like with grade eight and nine, there is a document that you can access. This is a very small document. You probably can't read the text on the screen behind me, but it breaks down things a lot better. You can see exactly what you are doing in each week. Okay, awesome. Then we've got grade 11s. Now from grade 10 to grade 11, in my honest opinion, there is a little bit of a jump in the difficulty. And I think that that is true for both maths and for physics, physical sciences. But with that being said, you can tackle that gap if you are prepared. So don't throw away your grade 10 book once again. If you go back to your grade 10 book and revise before you hit grade 11. So you see you start with exponents and thirds. If you go back to your grade 10 book and you practice your exponents, going on to grade 11 exponents will be a lot easier. Okay, just don't fall behind with your maths and you'll be fine. Go home every day and repractice the sums that your teacher did in class. Do your homework, all those things. I'll be doing study tips for maths, study tips for physical sciences. So hit the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up, comment down below and let me know if you want to see stuff like that. So you can see in grade 11, those are your topics. You've got equations, inequalities, exponents. So it's algebra, a lot of algebra, there's thirds, inequalities, and then you've got trigonometry. And this trigonometry is quite a bit more complex than grade 10 trigonometry. Again, we have the ATP document that goes into more detail. You can find that linked down below in the description. Same thing for grade 10s, linked down below in the description to access this full document. And then we've got grade 12s. If there are any grade 12s here, welcome. Good luck for the biggest year in your high school career. I know you've absolutely got this. So grade 12, you can see that it looks like a little bit, but I mean, each of these topics have quite a bit underneath them. So you need to work hard at these topics. Number patterns, sequences and series. We've got functions, but you're going to be doing, I don't know why it says formin definition. It should be formal definition, sorry. Inverses, exponential and logarithmic and some more trigonometry. And just like with the grade 11 document, there's a grade 12 one that you can download. It's linked in the description box. And again, grade 12s, it's super important to go back to your grade 11 notes and study your grade 11 maths. You do get tested on a lot of grade 11 concepts in matric. So you can't let those fall by the wayside. And in grade 12, you also build on some old grade 10 and 11 concepts. So you can't forget about those. And that is the success to maths. Going into maths prepared, going into maths go up once you've gone over the work already from previous years and then when you get home practice the sums that you did in class do your homework all those things and you guys have got it i know you do i can't wait to see you guys in the next video in future videos if you like this video please subscribe to my channel give it a thumbs up and i'll see you guys in the next one